What is up? What is up? What is up? Awesome people of the internet. Hello, hello, hello. I hope you guys are doing fantastic. Um, guys, we are one day away from Championship Sunday. This is a day that um, is the most important day in women's college basketball every single year. Every year, we have hundreds and hundreds of teams compete in Division One. Hundreds of teams competing in Division One. Uh, we only have uh, 60, 64 um, of them uh, able to to compete in the NCAA tournament, or sixty eight, I should say, in the in the NCAA tournament. Uh, we then whittle it down from um, from the the first four games, where four teams drop off. Then we have sixty four teams play against each other to battle it out to see who can make it to the next round. We go from 64, then we go to 32, then we go to 16, then we go to eight, then we go to four. And now we are finally here, guys. We're finally here at the final two. This is what the entire season is all about. Absolutely. Yes, you want to have fun. Yes, you want to get better, all that good stuff. However, you want to make it this season to go to Cleveland. You want it to make it to Cleveland because you want it the opportunity to compete at the highest and highest and highest of stages. Um, and guys, that is what we, are, what we are here to talk about. We are here to talk about the championship uh, game that we're going to see tomorrow, a rematch, or a rematch from last year. Um, and we are going to, um, we're going to say guys that tomorrow is probably going to be a record breaking day. And I'm, 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 I'm excited about it. Uh, so in the stream, we're going to talk about, um, yes, we're going to talk, we're going to give a preview of, um, likely what you can expect, uh, tomorrow at the, at the, uh, Iowa versus South Carolina game. Will South Carolina complete their perfect season or will Caitlin Clark leave women's college basketball with the storybook ending? We're going to, we're going to get into that. But first, before we do, I do want to say, guys, I was at the Final Four. I was at the Final Four game, and it was phenomenal. So I do want to just talk through my experience at the game because I, I thought it was it was very very fun. It was it was the highlight of this uh, of this uh, short short lived um, YouTube career thing or whatever this thing is. Like that that was that was the ultimate highlight. Like I. Really, really enjoyed my time at the game. Shout out to uh, um, uh, Car Carmela for like being an awesome person and um, getting me a ticket to to go to the game games yesterday. So yesterday I was able to watch uh, both South Carolina versus NC State and UConn versus Iowa, and it was so 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 fun. Um, absolutely so fun. And and this is like what it's all about, right? It's 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 the opportunity to go to to a game and and just I mean again I didn't really care who won um, I just wanted to see a good game and for the first game we saw um, in the first half it was pretty close absolutely second half it was it was over it was it was absolutely over um, uh, South Carolina just demolished NC State. Um, but then we went to that second game and the second game was neck and neck throughout neck and neck throughout the entire time. And, uh, ultimately it was Iowa that fared on top. We are going to talk specifically about what happened in that game. Um, but, but also, um, I, I do just want to say, um, I had a fantastic time and it was really, really awesome to see some of the awesome people of the internet in person. Guys, uh, not only did I go to the game, which was very, very fun, uh, but this this morning, actually at 11 a.m., uh, we did a meetup. We had our first awesome people of the internet meetup, guys. It was so, 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 so fun. Um, shout out to, honestly, shout out to Michael. Uh, shout, out, shout out to Carmela. Like, this was, like, the, the folks who showed up today for the first official um, hangout, like in-person hangout of the awesome people of the internet. It was it was so fun. It was absolutely fun. And guys, we are going to do this again. We are absolutely going to do this again. So next year, 
when the Final Four is in Tampa. We're doing another meetup. This season of women's women's uh, of the WNBA, we're doing several meetups. We're going to have at least one meetup at a Sky game. We're going to have a meetup at at Phoenix um, when when we when we go to um, when when um, when we have the the All Star game. So guys, I hope you all uh, are interested in having in person meetups because that's something that I really want to do. Like I I was like, oh, this might be a good idea, but like the conversations we had were so fun. It was it was you know hot dip, hot takes. From everybody, everyone just like talking about the game and just, it was just a fun time. And it's, it's, it's rare that you are able, in, in my case at least, it's rare that I'm able to have conversations in person with like diehard women's basketball fans. Because I mean, yes, I know we talk a lot through the internet, but like in person, I don't really know that many people who like really, 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 truly love the WNBA besides my family. And the the fact that we were able to talk, uh, and and just we talked about everything, guys. We do. <laughs> we went we went down the list, um, you know, talked talked about the, the 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 Tennessee uh firing of Kelly Harper. We talked about uh the 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 future of um Iowa women's basketball. We talked we like we talked about uh, LSU. We talked about South Carolina. South Carolina. We talked. We talked about a lot of stuff and it was very, very fun. Um, and it's one of those things where like, if you weren't there, you didn't, you couldn't like really get the whole feel of it, but it was phenomenal. So shout out to the folks who were able to join me uh, today for that. It was, dude, it, it was, it was fire. It was absolutely fire. Um, so hopefully, hopefully y'all will have an opportunity to uh, gather at a future um, in person, hang out for the awesome people of the internet. Cause we're not just on the internet guys. We are in real life and, uh, we not new to this. We true to this. And we're going to talk about some women's basketball and we were talking so much about women's basketball that the table next to us was like, Hey, are, are, are you talking about Haley Van Liff? <laughs> we were like, yeah, it was, it was, it was a fun time. It really was. Uh, shout out to uh, McDonald's has bucket fries, uh, of fries. They do have buckets of fries. Yeah, they do. They do. <laughs> Thank you so much for the super chat. Um, yeah, it was it was so fun. Um, Kyra, hopefully you're able to join for a future one. Uh, hopefully you're able to join for a future one. That, that it was really 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 fun. Uh, RC says, uh, looks like you guys probably had a had a, a blast. Yeah, it it was so fun, so 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 fun. Uh, JB, I mean, a future, a future, uh, we're going to do, we're going to be doing this more in the future. We're going to be doing this more in the future. So hopefully, 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 hopefully you would be able to, uh, to attend a future one guys. Um, all right guys. Uh, so yeah, I, I did, I did just want to talk about that because it was just, it was so fun. Yes. Yes. Going to the game, uh, uh yesterday was a huge highlight for the final four, but like, being able to talk to um to like some of the awesome people of the internet in person was just it was awesome. It was freaking awesome. All right guys, let's let's do a little bit of a recap of uh the final four. All right. So, uh we saw South Carolina take on NC State. South Carolina uh this game was close in the first half. Very very close. Um, in the first half, and then um, it felt like the floodgates opened. So um, South Carolina had a pretty low scoring game in the first half. They had 16 points in the first half, 16 in the second half, or, or no, 16 points in the first quarter, 16 in the second quarter, um, and you know, neck and neck with uh, with um, NC State. The game it was a one point game at halftime, and I was like, oh. We're gonna see. We're gonna see a fantastic game. We're gonna see a close neck and neck game. NC State is still hanging in there. And then guys, and then the third quarter happened. <laughs> and then the third quarter happened, and it was over. It was it was flat out over from there. And and guys, it was it was just nothing. It was absolutely nothing that um that NC State could do. They just they just got ran over, guys. They like 
you know, and it and it got to the point where I was just like, man, I felt I felt I felt kind of bad for NC State. Like I I felt bad because like Azaya, her shooting her, her shooting was off basically all game. Yes, she did end up with twenty points um, in the game, but like it was clear that she was she was not her her she was not herself. The version of 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 uh, of Azaya James that got them to this point, it just it it couldn't sustain them because she just couldn't keep that same firepower. Um, I thought I thought that um, that overall, uh, River Baldwin did pretty decent for NC State. Uh, it really was Isaiah James that like played the best, but still didn't play that great for NC State. And then the second place, I would say like uh, I would say that um, that uh, River Baldwin you know played pretty decently. She almost had a double double in this game. Um, she had twelve points, nine rebounds. Also, Zoe Brooks came off the bench and had some production as well. I really do think in the future, uh, this team is like Zoe Brooks is really going to continue to develop under Westmore. Um, she has a lot of potential. Like I, I really enjoy watching Zoe Brooks play. Um, she can get to the basket, and she's just a fun player to watch. Um, yes, she has a lot more development to go. So that's my take on NC State. Overall, they played bad. Um, Isaiah played the best out of them, but still didn't play that great. River played pretty decently, um, and and Zoe Books played pretty decently, um, but everybody else just didn't have a good game. And 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 if you're wondering why, why did NC State just kind of fold in the in the um, in the second half? Why, why why did that happen? Well, it was because of. Um, yeah, it, 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 was, it was because of a multitude of factors. One, Camila Cardoso was eaten. She was eaten. She was eaten in the paint. She was getting the passes that she needed to get right there in the pocket to score. She was also getting some uh, uh, offensive rebounds as well. She finished the game with 22 points, 11 rebounds, and, guys, she was so efficient, 10 of 12 from the field, and she just looked good. And, guys, it wasn't even that Cam – yes, Camilla scored the most points, but, y'all, this game – in my opinion, the player of the game was Ashlyn Watkins. Or should I say Ashlyn Swatkins. Ashlyn had eight points in this game. So like, you know, okay. Not that efficient in terms of scoring. However, it is, uh, it is her defense. And it is her rebounding ability. She had 20 rebounds in this game. 20. Uh, it, it, not, not two. Not ten not 15 guys she had 20 rebounds and the guys this is this is not just a a thing that you know a player does but she came off the bench and did that this is the most rebounds by any player off of the bench in an NCAA tournament game in the last 25 seasons she was unstoppable she absolutely was she was getting those boards feeding it uh, to to the to the player and and like they were they were they were moving, um and it was clear that NC State just couldn't hang. It was Camilla being very very efficient at the basket. It was Ashlyn grabbing anything in sight, and it was everybody else just sort of playing their role. Everybody ate for for South Carolina last night. Everybody, everybody besides Chloe Kitts. Besides Chloe Kitts. Everybody ate. Um, she just had a she just had a rough game. I don't know. Um, I I think it's likely that she will not start in the championship game tomorrow. Chloe Kitts and uh, we'll see Ashlyn start in her place. But but everybody else for the most part ate in that game. Uh, Raven had thirteen. Um, Pow Pow hit, hit hit two threes with ten points. Um, even even um y'all Sanaya Fagan, the Sanaya Fagan, um, the Sanaya Fagan Ashlyn Watkins combo is fun to watch. Like Carmela, she mentioned it um during the game and I was like, "Oh." So I started really really paying attention to when Sanaya Fagan and uh Ashton Watkins were in the game. They're a good duo. I'm just saying. I'm just saying they're a good duo. They are a very good very good duo. Um Tessa Johnson, she just is a fun player to watch. She's she's just I don't know. She's just a, a huge joy. I don't know if y'all watch uh, the little video videos that she does for uh, for South Carolina, but like Tessa Johnson's fun. She's just you know, and she can ball too. She can ball too, um, you know. And uh, Malaysia Fulwali, you know, she 
she, uh, you know, did her thing as well. She ended up with seven points. Um, but overall, just the South Carolina team is just, yeah. The 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 they it seemed like they decided, okay, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna ball in that se- in that second half. Yeah, we're gonna and that's what they did. They had twenty nine points in that second half. Twenty nine points. And uh, what did NC State have in that in that um in that uh third quarter? What did they have? Six. South Carolina had twenty nine points in that third quarter. NC State has six. Yeah. Yeah. They were shut down. They were absolutely shut down. And that's how the cookie crumbles, man. When you play against the best team in the country, that that's what you get, man. Like that's just that's just that's what you get. And it's it's tough, man. It is it is so tough. It is so so tough. Uh, Michael says Fagan and Watkins play well off each other. They do. They do. A big problem for everybody next year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you, yes, absolutely. Camila Cardoso get, get them blocks. Absolutely. You know? Um, but, but when, when, uh, Sonia Fagan and Ashlyn Watkins are in the game, they get more blocks, uh, that, that the periods of times where they're in the game. Um, and just defensively, like you can't really do anything when them two are in the game, in the game. Cause, Cause they feel like, Camilla Cardoso is phenomenal, but I feel like uh, Sanaya Fagan is, is more mobile than Camilla, which makes the duo of Ashlyn and Sanaya in the game, it makes it tough. It makes it tough. Um, Let's see, let's see. Uh, let's see, let's see. I, I, um, um. I'm trying to see what y'all are talking about. Uh, T says Tessa Johnson is the real deal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jay, uh, Jay says Kitts seems like she's in her own head. I, the thing is, like, Chloe Kitts is so talented, so 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 talented. Um, but like we, it, it's sort of like she had. She had a huge, huge, huge start to the season where she was just miss efficient. Like uh, she was so efficient in the first half half of the season, and then it it feels like she's just sort of like weighing down a little bit. Um, and I'm not totally, totally sure why, but Chloe Kitts is when you talk about someone who could be a mid range assassin. As a as a uh, as a post player, that's Chloe Kitts, but I feel like she hasn't totally been playing her game as of late. Like the thing, the thing that works well for her. Um, but she's gonna be fine. Like it's not a, to me, it's not a big deal. It's just a thing, you know. Uh, she she's ultimately she ultimately she's gonna be fine. Um, but I don't see her starting uh, in the game tomorrow. All right, so so that was. South Carolina versus NC State. South Carolina beats NC State 78 to 59. Um, and ultimately, it started off as a really good game and then it ended up into a not so great, kind of boring game, um, in, in my opinion, because I, I love close games. Again, I, again, I don't care who's going to win. I don't. But I wanted a close game. I, I, I of course, knew that South Carolina was going to win um, because, of course, they were the best, uh, best, best uh, team. Uh, but I wanted it to be close, but it wasn't. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. And, guys, then we move on to uh, the game of the night. The game of the night, Iowa versus UConn. Guys, what a freaking game. It was from jump, first of all, from jump. The Iowa fans were in the building. There were there were a lot of UConn fans, and normally, normally when we talk about women's basketball, normally when we talk about women's bas- basketball, we talk a lot about UConn, right? UConn, their fans have been true to this for decades, loyal bunch. They follow the team when, whenever they play, and you see, and when when UConn's playing in the tournament, you see a sea of of blue in the crowd. But guys, yesterday we saw a lot of black. And yellow, lots of black and yellow in the crowd. When when they did introductions, it was yes, people were going up for UConn. As, and when they announced Paige Beckers, like yes, people were going up. But it wasn't the same as Iowa. 
it it was a noticeable difference in the crowd and and that's why i like i love the fact that i was actually able to go because that's something that you can't get watching tv like you 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 i mean you can't really hear and see all the differences in terms of fans just watching it on tv but actually being there and seeing like oh my goodness wow this is basically all Iowa fans. <laughs> like it was, it was insane, and I loved it. Like it, it was so, it was so, so fun to watch, guys. If y'all can hit that like button, that would be phenomenal. We got about three hundred and eighty people in the chat. Thank y'all so much for joining, guys. I, I do want to ask. I do want to ask for you to hit that like button. That really, really helps the channel. That helps more people find the channel. Um, and uh, and yeah, yeah, it just helps out, helps out a lot. So please, please, please hit that like button and also if you have not subscribed to the channel please hit that subscribe button as well all right guys so we are we are talking about iowa versus yukon yesterday and uh not only the fan difference like again lots of fans but that game was phenomenal we we talk about a great game of basketball we saw that last night yes in, in terms of uh, the closeness of the game yes from a from a like um um from a from a ba basketball perspective and the way that that South Carolina executed yes that's great basketball however I want to see very close games and we saw a close neck and neck game Iowa versus UConn Iowa does come out on top winning by two points seventy one to sixty seven or sixty nine I should say and uh, this game this game was a um, microcosm of a lot of stuff. It was a microcosm of a lot of stuff. So we're gonna we're gonna walk through sort of uh, my thoughts about this game. So going into it, I was like, okay, Iowa has it. I thought I was gonna win by a couple points, but I thought they were gonna win. I, definitely, I thought they were gonna win by more than two points. I thought it was gonna be a close game throughout, but ultimately, at the end of the game, I thought I was gonna win the game. So coming into it, that's what I thought. Um, and as the game was kind of going on, you know, UConn comes out to a good start. Caitlin has it. Horrible first half. Absolutely horrible. And the reason why she had a, had a bad first half is because of this girl that may actually leave the draft undrafted. Her name is Nika Mule. Nika Mule has impressed me so, so much by the way that she played defense. So Nika Mule is a player who, who uh, you know, has gotten um, the, the foul bug at times and, and, and can foul quite a bit. Uh, but y'all, Nika Mule has played, I would say, the best defense I have seen against Caitlin. I kind of want to say all year, um, or, or at least in a, in, a, in a long, long, long time. <laughs> like, she, y'all, Nika Mule, I don't think she was necessarily a, a draft pick. I, 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 I didn't really see her on the board uh, to get drafted. However, hopefully she's earned that, at least, I hope. Uh, and, and the reason why is because, yes, absolutely, Nika Mule is a good point guard, can get her teammates involved, can, you know, all that good stuff. But, y'all, Nika Mule can play some defense. It was, it was, it was amazing watching Nika play Caitlyn. And, and she, Nika did one of the things that I have not seen someone do in a long time against uh, Caitlyn. She took away her left hand shot. Caitlin Clark does the same exact thing every single game. It's like clockwork. It, and, 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 the, and the thing is it, it is, it is so much like clockwork that I know it's going to happen. Caitlin does one of several things. One, she will dribble the ball on her right hand side, take it all the way to the basket, cut the corner, get, a, get an easy layup. Or she'll be dribbling on the right, right hand side, she does a, a step back move, moving, um, drifting back to the left and hits the shot. Usually that's her like classic three. It's a, it's a step back jumper um, uh, from the three point line going to her, uh, going back and left. That's what she does. If you take away Caitlin's left, she struggles. And y'all in that first half, I was seeing Nika Mule taking away the left hand, the left side of Caitlyn. That is how she is so dangerous. And Nika did it. And I was like, I was like, wow. Like, it, I was like, why haven't anybody done this? Like, no one has seemed to be successful at doing this. And it was, mm -mm -mm. 
It was phenomenal, man. It was phenomenal to watch. In the second half, it felt like it felt like uh like um you know, in the first half, Nika not Nika locked her down. You know, uh, uh, Caitlyn was frustrated, couldn't really do much. Um, and in the second half, yes, Caitlyn did get get some bucket score, uh, and and she got like it, I don't think it, they were back to back three pointers, but it felt kind of like back to back three pointers. And and that was because, in my opinion, it was because uh, one, Nika, it, it felt like Nika like she exerted so 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 much energy just hanging with Caitlyn off of every single screen that it's just. It's kind of hard to kind of keep that up. It, it really is. So, like, you know, she 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 did have some plays where um, Caitlyn just got the best of her in that second half. Uh, but I expected Caitlyn to score close to 40 points in this game. Caitlyn only had 21 points in this game. Caitlyn shot 3 of 11 from the three-point line. Overall, Caitlyn was 7 of 18. The reason why... This game was so close is because Nika Mule understood the assignment. She understood it. And this is what you expect from players. This is what you expect. You, you expect this. You expect for players to show up and show out on the biggest of stages. And that's what she did. In, in term, and also, not only, not only did Nika uh, play some great defense against Caitlin, but y'all... Nika Mule hit a three-point bucket that made me think, oh, my goodness, UConn might win this. It was in the fourth quarter. Uh, the, the game was, the game was uh, running down. Um, Iowa, Iowa had the lead, um, and uh, Iowa was winning by uh, uh, four points at that moment. It was, it was a little bit less than a minute left to go, like 40, 49 seconds left. And Nika Mule gets a pass. She's wide open. Gets a three-point shot, and I was like, oh, my God, is she going to make it? Is she going to make it? Drains the three-point shot, and y'all, <laughs> as just a fan of basketball, I was going crazy. I, if y'all watch the live stream, if y'all watch the live stream from yesterday, y'all will see when that moment happened, I was going crazy. I was like, let's go, Nika. <laughs> and I was like, wow, UConn might have this. Uh, her three-point bucket gets UConn to a one-point game with 49 seconds left to go. And then, you know, we 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 see, you know, a uh, uh, turnover for for uh, um, uh, for for um, for Iowa. Hannah Stokey has the ball, turns it over. UConn's ball. Okay, we got ten seconds left in the game. UConn has the ball. They're losing by one point, and I, at that moment, I was like, I was like, wow, okay. UConn has the game. I I was I was like, oh, you because we knew because because they they called a timeout, and I was like, yeah, Gino's gonna Gino's gonna draw up something real nice. It's gonna involve Paige and Aaliyah, and it's gonna that's gonna be the end of it. And guys, we got we got Screen Gate. We got Screen Gate, where where um, we saw Aaliyah Edwards set a screen, get called for the movie screen. Offensive foul on Aaliyah Edwards. Iowa ball, and the game was over from there. And, you know, that, that was sort of how the cookie crumbles. Guys, I will tell you, in the moment, I was so mad about that call. I was so mad. Because I was like, yes, that was a moving screen. Absolutely. Like, like I was kind of a, kind of high, higher higher up um, in, this, in the statement, and, and I, I saw it. I was like, yes, that, that's a moving screen. However, you don't call it. <laughs> In my opinion, I was like, you, you don't call that at all. You leave, you leave that, that that's a that's a call that you would make in the first quarter to me. You would you don't call that at the end of the game to like finish it all off. So that was that was absolutely my thought. It was an illegal screen. It was it was. Um, um, Aaliyah Edwards' stance was way too wide. When you're setting a screen, you're supposed to be like. You're not supposed to sort of extend past, uh, extend past your, um, um, your your shoulders. And she was extremely wide, and also she was moving. So yes, illegal screen, absolutely. And and I was like, oh man, why did they call? And it was, um, it was it was a comment. 
it was a, it was a comment that I saw. Um, I think it was I think it was uh, Gabby Marshall, and I was I recently I like just just heard it, and and she was like, well, if if you know, if you're gonna call it in the first quarter, you should call it when the game's on the line. And I was like, yeah, yeah, but you know, so. So I, I, I absolutely get it. Uh, um, it that that is a call that was a foul. It absolutely was. It it just was. Um, but as a it's just a, as a fan of the game, I just don't like the the the. I don't like that the game felt like it was decided because of that. But yes, it was the right call though. It was. It was. It was the right call. But also. I just don't like that that decided the game. Um, so, yeah, that that that's my that's my thing on that. Uh, and also, guys, um, Gabby Marshall has said that she had to delete social media because she's had so many hateful comments. Guys, leave Gabby Marshall alone. All right, leave Gabby Marshall alone because. Just because, first of all, first of all, it's not it's not Gabby Marshall's fault that they called that foul. It, it was a, it was an illegal screen. Gabby sold it a little bit, and she should. She gets the call, and then she looks on social media and she sees like hateful stuff all on her feed, and she has to delete social media because of it. I mean, it's kind of sad, you know, as a as a as a um, uh, person who gets very intense about the game and like you know. Uh, we'll call out bad calls or bad calls and all that stuff. Um, I don't think I, I don't think us as fans should ever get to the point where we are like going on uh, these uh, um, you know uh, I don't think we should get to the point where we're going on Gabby Marshall's page and and we're and we're saying um bad stuff to her because first of all the refs called that that had nothing to do with Gabby Marshall. All right. And second of all, even if it did, guys, like, please leave, 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 leave these players alone. First of all, leave, leave these players alone. Um, as Cole uh, says, her social media is up. I, I think it's, I think it's, it's, it, she had, she deleted it from her phone. I think that's what she was saying. She deleted it from her phone. Um, uh, but it's just sad to like, you know, I, I, I get I get, um, yeah, yeah, Alex. Yep, yep. Her, her, her accounts are still up, but she deleted it from her phone, um, so she won't see them, even though they're still out there. Uh, my, my point is that it's not that serious, guys. This is a game. What, basketball is fun. Basketball is entertainment. When your team loses, I know you're upset. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can be upset. You can be very mad at the refs. You can say the refs shouldn't have did that and whatnot. But when you start to spew hate at a player, to me, that's crossing the line. I, I just, you know, sometimes, sometimes I feel like, and it could be, it could be that some of the people who were so mad were like people who betted on the game and they lost their bet and now they're like upset or whatever. And that's why I think like, you know, the, the, the idea of uh, betting in amateur sports is a little bit dicey, in my opinion, because it could lead to more of this. Um, it's just, you know, it's sad. You know, don't don't go giving somebody death threats because uh, uh, your team lost. Like, it, it's not that serious. It, it's really not. It's really, really not that serious. And I think as we... Um, as we as we as we talk about um, women's basketball and the and the growth of the game and whatnot, um, I uh, I wish that um, you know stuff like this didn't happen. You know, it's kind of sad. Um, so I, I just I just wanted to, to to speak on it real quick and just be like, hey man, like it ain't that serious, guys. If your team loses, your team loses. I mean, it is what it is, guys. It is what it is. Um, so. Uh, JB says, uh, death threats are absurd. It's just a game. It's never that deep. We got to do better collectively as fans because this happens way too often. I, I, I agree with you, JB. I agree. I agree. Um, 
and it's just yes yeah it's it's sad it's sad um joseph says quitter are you disappointed about lsu losing given your allegiance to lsu i don't have a, a allegiance to lsu uh but no i'm not disappointed in them, in them losing they they played bad and they deserve to lose so they lost so yeah um uh, dj says i also told my players that one play shouldn't cause a team to lose a game yeah i mean UConn had, had moments to win this game. They had opportunities to win this game in the second half. They didn't take it. Um, and then the game uh, gets d decided on a, on a, on a last-second call. And absolutely, um, is, is it rough to deal with? Yes. However, UConn could have won the game earlier than this. So, so yeah. Uh, Nancy says, any of you awesome people on the internet have a Sunday ticket for the championship uh, you want to sell outside of the outrageous digital sales vendors? Uh, we, we really need one more ticket. Guys, if y'all have uh, an additional ticket that you're trying to sell, uh, please let Nancy know. Nancy, hopefully, hopefully somebody, uh, hopefully somebody is, is able to, um, uh, is able to help you out with a ticket. Um, so yeah, hopefully. Um, but yeah, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. A says, I love how many people lose their money on this game. Um, I think it's sad. I don't really like it, you know, cause I feel like it just, the game is the game is I don't know I think in, in general sports betting is is a tough thing like it's just I, I personally just don't like it because I feel like it takes the fun away from from the game you know it, it, it it's about it's about gambling it's about winning at that point and it's not about just the joy of having your team win you know um all right all right all right. Uh, Nicholas says, uh, what we should be talking about is Gabby's defense on page because, because I was super impressed. Yeah, guys, Gabby Marshall has been the player that has, for the most part, taken the most, most, um, the hardest defensive, uh, matchup, uh, for, for guards for Iowa all season, all season. We have seen Gabby Marshall show up game after game after game after game and, and put on a defensive clinic. A yes, at times, does she struggle to score? Absolutely. But the reason why Gabby Marshall's playing uh, darn near uh, uh, 40 minutes a game, the reason why is because she plays defense. Like, it is it is insane, the defense. Like, so um, basically for the, for the game, uh, we saw – Gabby Marshall on Paige Beckers. And Paige Beckers is a bucket. Paige didn't have a great game. She was 7 of 17. Um, and it was it was like when she would get off of screens, when she would try to do some stuff. Who was there? Gabby Marshall. And, and it's a similar thing to me. To me, it is it is a it is a similar thing to how Nika shut down Caitlin. And Gabby shut down Paige. And, and the thing that, that I just find so crazy is Gabby Marshall shut down, one, uh, well, uh, slowed down, I should say, because still, you know, uh, Paige did end up with, with, with 17 points. But, but Gabby slowed down one of the best women's basketball players um, in, in the college game right now. And a player... She shut down a player who would be the number number two pick in the WNBA draft right now, actually, or could be the number one. It, 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 you know, she shut down one of the greatest players we have seen play women's basketball in a, in a good bit. You know, you, you you talk about the greatness of Caitlin Clark, you talk about the greatness of Paige Beckers. Like these are players who have have done it for years in the college game at an elite level, right? So the greatness of Paige Beckers 
and how she was severely slowed down by Gabby Marshall, a, a, a player who is starting for Iowa, playing just about 40 minutes a game, and, and, is, a, and is a player who will go on to not play in the WNBA next year. Gabby Marshall is, uh, she's going to be a, um, uh, she's going to graduate school on, on the East Coast. I forgot exactly what school she's going to, but but the idea that that she could be this good defensively to shut down a top, 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 top player and at us likely not see her in the WNBA, it's just, it's wild. It, it is, it is absolutely wild. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Let's give, let's give, um, let's give Gabby her, her flowers. Cause G- Gabby's been doing this all season. I like, like this to me, Nika played defense better than she normally plays defense. In, in my opinion, Gabby has been doing this. She is, she is, she has been doing this. Oh, thank you, Fernando. Yes, Gabby's going to uh, grad school in North Carolina. There we go. Thank you so much. Um, Michaela, I think you got a point there. Yeah, Michaela says uh, Gabby uh, has gotten practice guarding Caitlin Clark. Yeah, yeah, she yeah, cause cause they you know, I mean who. who what what's a better player to go against in practice to get you ready for the real game than um than than um uh, Caitlin Clark? So yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you, Alex. Uh, Alex says Gabby is going to uh, University of North Carolina, uh, Chapel Hill for occupational therapy. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, Kyra says I thought KK looked great for you. I did so too. I did too. Yeah. I I, th- I thought I thought she had some really good moments as well, and I think I think the thing about UConn that is just guys, the future of UConn is bright. The the future like did we expect UConn with the team that they have right now? Did we expect them to make it all the way to the Final Four? No. But next year, I expect them to make it to the Final Four, if not make it to the championship game, because guys, everybody should be healthy next year. You know. Everybody should be healthy for UConn next season. And also, they got the number one incoming freshman in Sarah Strong. Sarah Strong, it is official. She has decided to go to UConn next season. And um, she's going to be a tough uh, tough player to go against. You know, um, she has... Okay, guys, let me know in the chat if y'all think this too. I feel that um, that Sarah Strong has like Alyssa Peely vibes. I get like Alyssa Peely vibes looking at uh, Sarah Strong play. But anyway, not, o- not only will they have Sarah Strong next year, but also Ayanna, Patter- Ayanna Patterson should be healthy, hopefully. Um, she missed the entire season this year. Uh, Amari DeBerry um, should be good to go. Uh, you have um, uh, AZ Fudd, who is – she was she. I, I've seen her recently in, in, um, in shorts, in practice shorts, uh, as as um, UConn's been doing their shoot around and whatnot, and so I'm like, okay, well, she must be a lot better than uh, what she was earlier in the year. So yeah, again, Az Az's gonna be back. Uh, you you're bringing in the best freshman incoming um, guys. Also, Jenna L Alfie, Jenna L Alfie will be back and likely be able to start um, uh, the season off healthy and. I'm just like, wow, this team is going to be good next year. And, and you see, you're, you, you've you seen the maturation of these freshmen over the season. Um, KK, I feel like KK was not this good early in the year. She looks good, you know. Still, she has a lot of growth to do. Absolutely. Has a lot of growth to do. Um, but I feel, I, I see improvement. I do. When Cadence gets in the game. I've seen improvement, you know, I, Ice Brady, slight improvement, you know, these, these freshmen, they're, they, they weren't, they weren't supposed to be the starters. These freshmen were not supposed to be the starters. 
And I, uh, you know, I don't know. I, yes, next year, these start, these, the, the freshmen who are starting right now likely, likely will not be starting next year. They won't <laughs> because they weren't supposed to start this year, you know? Um, but they did what they could. They've improved over the season and next year they'll be coming off the bench and they'll be better than they were this season. So that, that's, that's my, that's my thoughts about that. Uh, that is my thoughts about that. Um, guys. So that was kind of my recap. That was kind of my recap of, um, of yesterday's games for the final four. Um, now I, I do want to see. Um, let's see, let's see. Check, taking a look at y'all comments. Uh, JB says UConn will be tough uh, next year. Um, they lose Edwards and Nika. Yep, uh, but I don't think they miss a beat, and they'll be super deep on the bench. Absolutely. If they say, as long as UConn stays healthy, they're gonna be they're gonna be tough. They're gonna be tough. A very very tough uh, squad. Uh, Nicholas says we have to give Gino and his fellow coaches so much credit. Yeah. I mean, guys, if, if you didn't think Gino was a good coach, if all of the titles, all of the Final Four appearances, if all of that did not convince you that Gino Oriema was a phenomenal coach, this season should have done that. This season, UConn was basically dead in the water. They had so many injuries where they, their team was basically decimated. And you had to just run with Nika, Paige, Aaliyah, and Freshman. And the fact that he got this squad to get to the final four, it's a coaching masterclass. It just is. And so if, if that did not convince you, if, if, if what he has done in the past has not convinced you, hopefully you are convinced now um, that Gino's a special coach. He is. He's a special coach. Uh, love him or hate him. Love him or hate him. He's a special coach. Uh, Ronald says, how do we contact you? Uh, Quita, um, Quita love sports at gmail.com. It's in the description. Look at it. Look at and look in the description of, of this video. It's, it's right there. Uh, Quita love sports at gmail.com. Um, AF says this was Gino's greatest coaching performance. He's always been, uh, way more than just a great rec recruiter. Yeah, yeah. And, and and we saw and we saw it. We saw it on display. We saw it. Uh our dog says, yeah, UConn wasn't supposed to be this uh wasn't supposed to get that far with all the injuries. Yeah, absolutely. Uh Alex says, have you heard of the awesome the awful coaching YouTube channel? He's blasting, you know. I haven't heard of it, but uh I, I don't know why he's blasting them. I I Gino's done a phenomenal job this this season, so I don't know. I haven't I haven't seen it, so uh, no true comment. But yeah. Um. Let's see. Uh, Elsbeth says I think uh, that would get. Um. Uh, wait. I, I think what would get South Carolina tomorrow is not. Getting back in transition defense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, Iowa is one of the best teams in the country in transition offense. One of the – because they can run. They can flat out run. And when they start running, you better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Because Iowa is going to run the ball. Absolutely. You know what they're going to do? They do it every time, but even even though they do it every time, it's hard it's hard to stop them. It is hard to stop them. They put their head up, they put their head up, and um, they you know it, it's to the race it's to the racetracks. You know they, they do their thing, uh, but guys, before we before we head off, before we head off and talk about specifically tomorrow's game, I do want to I do have one other thing I want to say one other thing. Um, one other thing I want to say is I want to talk about the fact that yesterday, 
made another record. Guys, we talk about the growth of women's basketball and the growth of women's basketball largely is starting in college. And we are seeing record after record after record being broke. We already saw um, 12 million plus watch on this past Monday as Iowa defeated LSU in the Elite Eight. Over 12 million, uh, the most watched women's basketball game ever. Uh, and that was phenomenal. Absolutely. We talked about that. We, we rejoiced in that. That that was great. And then we up it. We The game just keeps on elevating. And, guys, it is fun, 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 fun to watch. Okay, guys, here, here's, here's, here's the thing, guys. We had 17 million viewers at its peak for, for yesterday's game. Uh, yesterday, UConn versus Iowa peaked at 17 million. Million. That's a lot of people. And guys, this, the, the number of people up. So, so we, we had 14, 14.2 million viewers on average on ESPN. This is, this game was bigger than any other basketball game on ESPN ever. This is not just about women's basketball. We have transcended that we have transcended that and we are we are talking about basketball period and how these ladies are being seen by more people than the NBA like it, it's it is absolutely crazy guys this is this is history this is absolute absolute history where 14.2 million people watch a women's basketball game this is the most, uh, this is, so when, when you talk about, when you talk about, um, uh, sports in America, right. It's, it's football for sure. Then for the most part it's basketball, right? Um, so, so when we look at ESPN, they said that this is ESPN's second best non-football telecast ever because the football stuff, those get the most, the most ratings, right? And um, this is ESPN's second best non-football telecast ever. So, so this is this is like at the top of for the, for the most part, like all time stuff. And guys, it's just we we gotta celebrate this. We have to, we have to celebrate the game of women's basketball and how we are continuing to grow. We're we're continuing to level up, and it's just it's just special. It is so, 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 so special. Um, and as a, as a fan of the game, as someone who just wants the game to grow and get bigger and bigger and bigger, stuff like this is important. Stuff like this is important. Um, guys, it wasn't just that. Uh, we, we, we saw, yes, 14.2 million viewers for the, for the later game. Iowa versus UConn, but we also saw 7.1 million viewers for um, for NC State versus South Carolina, and that was great too. By the way, that that was that was a a, a great a great showing as well. Of course, not 14.2, but the fact that the fact that on average on average 7.1 million people watched a women's basketball game and then right after that game was over 14.2 million people watched the second game it's just you know the game is growing the game is growing guys look at this look at this graphic this is the most viewed women's national semifinals on record guys on a record and yeah it's just we're up 138% year over year. When do you see, when do you ever see a stat like that? When do you ever, when do you ever, ever, ever see a stat like that where, where something is up 138%? Can you imagine? Can you imagine um, your, your, the size of your wallet going up 138% year over year? Can you, like, that type of increase in anything is just astronomical. But the fact that in one year, one year, we we hit those numbers, 
it's just it's great. It is it is great, 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 great to see. Um this is uh the, the South Carolina NC State game, 7.1 viewers on average, uh, is the third best women's national semifinal audience on record. Um so so guys, we had we had over 12 million on Monday, this past Monday. We had uh, 7.1 million for the first game on Friday, 14.2 million for the second game on Friday. What are we going to get on Sunday? On, on, on Sunday, are, are we going to see 16 million people watching a women's basketball game? Are we going to see that? Like, it's possible. It is, it is very, very, very much possible. And I, I, for one, am here for it. I love it. Guys, we need to, we need to continue this on to the WNBA. Um, so that way, these ladies, not only, not only do they get... Um, the viewership that they deserve, but ultimately they get the money that they deserve because ESPN has gotten the best deal ever. Yes, we do have a new deal with uh, we we do have a new deal with um, with ESPN where where women's college basketball they re upped. I made a video previously about it, um, and the amount of money that they paid, yes, was record setting. However, it's now it's now basically a bargain. ESPN play, paid a bargain to keep women's college basketball, the NCAA uh, tournament. They paid a bargain. And it's and, and now you're going to have these other networks saying, hey, we want to get in, in future deals. We, we, we want to compete. We want to compete for the NCAA tournament, which means more money for colleges. It means more money for um, uh, uh, conferences. And ultimately, it means more money for the players in NIL and all that other stuff. Um, the growth of the game is great. Um, we, we, we talk about how important it is and, and how these players have been balling for years. Like This is not – absolutely, our numbers are up, and it's, it's, it's phenomenal. But also, let's continue to recognize the fact that there have been women who have blazed the trail for college basketball – and the reason why we are here, where we are right now, the reason why we are, we're here is because of Maya Moore. The reason why we are here right now with 138% year-over-year viewership, the reason why is because of Maya Moore. It's because of Candace Parker. It's because of Sylvia Fowles. It's because of Brianna Stewart. It's, be, it's because of, these, of the players who have paved the way, the players who have, have um, gotten recognition, but not the recognition that they truly, truly deserve. They were building. They were building something. Cheryl Miller, like all, all these players were building something amazing. And it just continued to stack on stack on stack. And, and now we're, and now we're reaping, reaping the harvest. Now we are reaping the harvest of what the, the, um, the older generation have given us. And it's, it's, it's great. It is, it is absolutely, absolutely great. I hope, I hope, I hope that the WNBA capitalizes on this, this is an opportunity for you to get these fans. 14.2 million people watched. Can we get 20% of those people? Let's just, let's just be, uh, uh, let's give a, a low ball thing and say that, um, that, that, that 20% of these people um, will, can continue on to the WNBA. Can you imagine how 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 many stadiums will be packed this year? Can can you imagine the um the the amount of views that the WNBA could get this season? It is important, yes, absolutely, to talk about uh, women's college basketball. But where is the WNBA? The WNBA needs to be front and center at these games. Front and center. Because you need to build this momentum and keep it going. Um, you know, keep it keep it going. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Let's 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 uh let's acknowledge where we are with women's college basketball. Let's acknowledge it, let's celebrate it. Let's remember that we didn't get here in a the vacuum. There were people who 
were here before that paved the way. If it wasn't for Maya Moore, we would not see Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark idolized Maya Moore. She looked up, looked up to her. She, she tried, she, she, she wanted, she wanted to be like Maya Moore. And we're going to have a new generation of players uh, uh, who coming up who want to be like Caitlin. Absolutely. Um, but it, but it, it's, and players who want to be like Angel, players who want to be like uh, Malaysia Fool Wiley, you know, all that, all that good stuff. But also, guys, always remember, re regardless of if you are new to women's basketball, maybe th this could be your first season watching women's basketball in earnest with women's college basketball. Um, it's important to realize, absolutely, cheer for, for, for the players that you know right now, but also it's important to realize that there were people in the other, like people who came, who came in front of them and paved the way. So, so I, I think that is just so, so, so important um, for us to, to recognize, to celebrate absolutely the ballers now, but also the ballers of the past to where if they didn't do what they did, this wouldn't exist. If, 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 uh, if, if in the, um, if in the nineties, we didn't have that Olympic, uh, women's Olympic team that, um, played well and built momentum for a women's professional team in the, in the, in the United States, if it wasn't for that Olympic team, we wouldn't have, um, um, the, the, uh, the WNBA right now, we wouldn't have it. And if it wasn't for David Stern and others who pushed for the league to happen, who who really um, promoted if it promoted it and made and made it what it is, if it wasn't for the Houston uh, the the Houston Comets, you know, if it, if it these are the people who who have helped to shape this game, and while we talk about the current players who are phenomenal, let's also make sure. We are giving the older players flowers because they deserve it, um, and and it's just important. It's just it is just so 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 important. All right, sorry guys for my little rant there. <laughs> sorry guys. <laughs> um, Jimmy says, uh, "Have you ever been to a game in South Carolina?" Uh, 18,000 um, seat Colonial Life Arena. I hope you can visit us. If not, Don Staley, Asia Wilson, Aaliyah Boston paved the way. Facts. Facts, facts, facts. Um, no, I have not gone to a, a South Carolina game. I really want to because I, I want to I want to go to a UConn game because I, because UConn fans are very unique and have been rocking with their team for decades. I just, I just love, I love fandom, you know, I love it. I, and I, I love to observe it. And I saw, I saw, I was able to observe it yesterday in the final four, but I would love to go to UConn to go to stores, to watch it, watch a game. I want to go to South Carolina, um, to, to Colonial Life Arena to watch a game. I want to go to the PMAC at LSU to watch a game. I want to go to Ohio state and watch a game. I want to go to Indiana and watch a game. Like there's, there's fan bases, um, that, I, I really enjoy. I want to go to Baylor and watch a game. There, there's so many like um, uh, legendary fan bases um, that it's just so great for the game of women's basketball. That I, I, I want to go and hopefully, hopefully when when I get my coins up, when I get my coins up, uh, hopefully I'll be able to do some sort of like road trip type thing where I'm going to various games because it's just it's fun. It it is it is fun to observe um, how the game has grown in person. Absolutely. We talk about, it, uh, we could talk about it. We could watch it on TV and talk about it that way, but like also going in person would be really cool. So I haven't, I haven't gone. I want to, I want to very much, very much. Uh, Michael says a lot of W players are in commercials now, but a lot of folks don't realize who they are. Yeah. Guys, it, it, I don't know if y'all heard, but, uh, Asia Wilson, um, said, um, yesterday that, that there were fans that were like, you're tall. You should play, you should, uh, you should play basketball. And it's like, man, and they were fans. They were, they were, they were fans of, uh, of women's college basketball, but I assume they were newer fans because they didn't know who Asia Wilson was. And you know, th there's some education that needs to be done. There are, there is some education that needs to be done. Absolutely. Let's welcome the new fans. Let's welcome them. Because to me, 
the growth of the game is the growth of the game. To me, that's a great thing. Like I, I, I am not a person who, 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 who sees negative in that, in the onslaught of new people joining the, joining the, the, the tribe of like women's basketball fans. I, I see nothing wrong with that. That's not, that's not a problem to me. However, I do think it's important for us to, as new fans come, come in and they're like, yeah, I love the game. Angel Reese is the only player I know and she's awesome. And the game of women's basketball is phenomenal, but the only player I know is Angel. It's, it's important for us to say, absolutely, Angel is great. But also, you may want to look at Asia Wilson. You may want to look at Candace Parker. You may, you may want to look at Taj McWilliams Franklin, who was a very, very great basketball player. She was, at, she was actually at the game yesterday. And I was like, oh, that's Taj. <laughs> I, was, I, was a, I was a big Taj McWilliams Franklin fan. Um, you know, you know it, it's, it's important for us to, you know, welcome them in, welcome them in and then tell them, well, have you heard of this person? Have you heard of this person? Like, I'll send you some highlights, you know, and, and, and get them, get them acclimated to the point where when they see someone not named, uh, uh, Caitlin Clark in a commercial, um, when they, when they see Arike Agumbawale in a commercial, they're like, oh, that's Arike Agumbawale. She plays for Dallas Wings. She's a baller, you know? I think, I think that's important. I, th I think that's important. And, th and that's going to come, but it's also up to us as, as, um, as, as fans of the game and who have been true to this for a long time. It's up to us to help educate in a nice way. Um, because I, I don't think everybody who's, who's uh, becoming a fan now is like anti old stuff. I think they, they just don't know. I, th I think they just don't know. And it's important for us to, you know, tell them about it, educate them a little bit in a nice way. You know, and hopefully, hopefully that is what I, that's what I try to do on the channel. Um, I don't know if I always succeed at it, but that, that's really what I try to do. It's a, to making, making the space of women's basketball a welcoming space for new people, um, to, to know what's going on and to be educated about, uh, the, the, the former folks who have really paved the way. Um, and also for the, for the current, for the, the people who've been true to this for decades, um, so to, to also be able to, ch uh, be able to chat as well. So hopefully that is what, um, that's what I'm trying to do on this, on this channel. Let me know, guys, if, if 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 I'm hitting that or whatever. Yeah, anyway. Um, as up says, WNBA players resent all the attention that, that college women's basketball uh, are getting. I mean, I think that's possible uh, because it could be one of those things where they're like, well, why aren't we getting this? You know what I'm saying? Because if, if it's talent, if all you're thinking about is talent alone, absolutely, the WNBA should have uh, way more fans. Absolutely. But the thing that the thing that I think people that the WNBA still hasn't fully realized is that the the growth of women's college basketball, sure, yeah, it's about the talent. Yeah, the the, the ladies are talented, but they're not the first women to play basketball. They're not, you know, uh, at a different at, like co completely at a different level than the people who came before. I think it's just that we have hit the perfect timing of social media of personalities and of uh, uh, a resurgence of fandom that we're seeing. And these college players are benefiting from it. And I think it's important for, for WNBA players to, to, you know, um, not resent it, to embrace it and say, Hey, we're, 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 we, we may see an influx of fans this season who want to come and see Caitlin. You know, uh, the the Las Vegas Aces had to had to um, uh, they changed their their venue uh, for for their game against um, for, uh, their game against the Indiana Fever because the demand was so high. They like sold out and they wanted more fans to be able to come and come and watch. So they changed the venue to a larger venue so they can watch the games. And when we when we talk about um, you know, Caitlin being a huge driver and, and Angel and, and others being a huge driver for new fans. To me, that's okay. Absolutely. Caitlin, anywhere the Indiana Fever goes, is going to sell out and fans are going to be flocking. And that's great because, yes, they're coming for Caitlin. Absolutely. They're coming from, for Caitlin, but they're going to see other players balling. They're going to come for Caitlin. They're gonna they're gonna stay 
for Aaliyah Boston and how and how ultimately how great the Indiana Fever team will sort of shape shape into being. Not not saying they're going to be great necessarily next year, but we're going to see flashes. Um, they're going to stay for um, you know looking at a player like a um, Arike Agumbuwale, and they're like, oh, she's a dog. She's good. You know, they're going to stay for a player like a uh, Kalia Copper. You know, it's okay for 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 these younger younger players to get a lot of attention and and to bring people into the game but people are going to stay because of the talent that they see in the league because the league the WNBA is the if you want to watch talented basketball you're watching the WNBA you're not watching college college is great I love college I absolutely do but but it's it's about the different narratives that that the college game has and 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 the uh the the sort of um personalities that, that drives the W the that drives women's college basketball. And as they go into the WNBA, it's going to, it's going to, you know, rise and tide lifts all boats. The WNBA is going to, going to um, have an influx in, in, in support, but it's important for the WNBA to not just have those people, but to cultivate them as like li- lifelong fans, cultivate them in, uh, create some sort of education program. When you're playing the Indiana fever, maybe you're doing before the game, maybe you're doing a history lesson about the team. You know, if you are Las Vegas, maybe you are doing a history lesson of before the game for uh, against Indiana. You're at this new arena that's larger. Before the game, maybe you're doing a history of the San Antonio Silver Stars, the different players who play for the San Antonio Silver Stars, how they morphed into the Las Vegas Aces, and why people should rock with the Aces. Maybe that's what you're doing. Same thing for the Chicago Sack. You're, you're telling a narrative that gets people uh, to understand that there was something that existed before. And I, I, I think that is something that hopefully the WNBA uh, uh, does because it, you, so you can educate fans um, on, on what they should be paying attention to because it's great basketball in the WNBA. That, that's not the issue. The issue isn't that. The issue is just people don't know. And they don't, they don't necessarily have an interest right now. But, but if, you, if you tell the story, they'll be interested. Uh, guys, if y'all get that like button, that would be phenomenal. Water break. <laughs> if, y'all, if y'all get that like button, that would be great. JB says, with women's college basketball leading the movement of popularity, I think this year's class will elevate the overall WNBA following. Uh, the W player shouldn't be resistant to that by way of hate. I don't get it. I I, I agree. Yep. Yep. They should embrace it. Yep. Michael, I, you, hey, you got something. Every time I see Flage play, I think of Clea Copper. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, let's see, let's see. Uh, Kevin says the WNBA is a great product. Caitlin and Angel, if packaged correctly, can usher uh, in a turning point when when the game fully goes mainstream. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. So Ross says, uh, when they negotiate media deal rights, um, let's hope they do the right thing. I think they will. I think they will. All right, all right, all right. Let's see what y'all got to say. A journey says uh, we have to realize the women's uh, college basketball is in part popular because people's uh, uh, people attend and watch due to school time. Uh, sure, sure. There there is a segment of of, of fans who 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 watch because they attended a, per, uh, a particular school. However, there has been a seismic growth in women's college basketball that had to me has nothing to do with where people went to school. Yes, sure, they have a base support, but also 
base support for a lot of schools doesn't do much in terms of actual like fan attendance. That maybe may get you a thousand, maybe two thousand fans in the stands. But what has been cultivated is is beyond school affiliation. It's it's a it's a personal connection that people have to certain coaches, to certain players. And to me, that is that is beyond school ties. And the, and it and and because of that, that could be used um, for the WNBA as well. Because it's not necessarily the school; it's the person that really drives the interest. Um, for example, Iowa. Iowa has so many fans now. Do you think all these people went to Iowa? No, they just like Caitlin Clark. So now they're a huge Iowa fan. You know, I'm just saying. Uh, Nancy says, um, love the idea of educating on history of teams, league and college game. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I hope the WNBA does that. I hope, I hope they do that. Alan says, Quita, I used to like pro only now as colleges. It's more unpredictable in college. Pro just seems boring. I mean, cause, cause pro is the, that's the elite of the elite. You're not you're like, <laughs> When, when, when you look at college, sometimes it, it is very unpredictable because some teams are, like, way better than others. And so with some teams, they actually know how to play defense on a star player, uh, and they're fundamentally sound on both, both offensive and offensive defense. And then you have other games where the teams isn't, and then you have someone just run up the score and score a whole bunch of points. So, yeah, it is, it is unpredictable. But, like, the WNBA, is it's, prof, it's professional. It's, like, it's not as uh, – the parody is so is so close in in the WNBA that I under I don't think the WNBA is boring, but I understand people who say that because it is the elite of the elite. Like you, you're not going to see blowouts like that in the WNBA. You're just not going to see it. Whereas in, in in women's college basketball, you see that because there are some teams that aren't invested in as much and they don't have. Um, they don't have a lot of the, um, the resources that other teams have. So yeah, you'll see crazy blowouts in the WNBA. It's not the case. It, it is not the case. The WNBA is, it is full parody, full parody. And it's the elite of the elite. It is the elite of the elite. And it's awesome to watch. It's awesome to watch. John says nothing beats the pros during playoffs. Yeah. I mean. I, I think so. I think so. Um, uh, hey, Darius says, WNBA is elite play. Facts on that. Absolutely. Uh, the best of the best. What's not to like? Can't wait for the season to start. Yeah. I can't wait either. I cannot wait either, guys. This is going, yeah. We're going to have a fantastic year of uh, of WNBA. Like, I, Yeah. As a as a as a huge WNBA fan, I am excited. Uh, yes, my Chicago Sky is not going to be very good. They're not. Uh, but we're going to watch some great basketball, and I am I am very much excited about it. Um, very 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 much excited about it. Uh, but guys, let's talk about the reason why we are here. The reason why we are here is to talk about South Carolina versus Iowa. The championship the championship game is set for tomorrow. We will see the undefeated South Carolina Gamecocks take on the Iowa Hawkeyes. Guys, this is a game of narratives. You have South Carolina, a team that is trying to finish off the season undefeated, and they're playing against Iowa, a team that is 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 it seems like it's on a on a path to uh to to a history book writing. Um, Caitlin Clark is leaving women's college basketball at the end of the season, and she is trying to leave with a win under her belt. She's trying to leave not just with a win. She's trying to leave with a NCAA championship. And this is something that is going to be tough to do against a team that is so so good as South Carolina. 
Um, so we're going to do similar thing to what we did in that game um, in the in the in the pre the pre pre show game for uh, the final four. We're going to talk about each team. We're going to give um, like sort of a general overview of, of some of the players, and then we're going to we're going to talk about what we will likely expect to see tomorrow. Um, and guys, I am going to start a poll um, that asks you all who will win. All right. I, I, I will have a poll, and I, I do want to know who you all think is going to win this game. And, uh, yeah, I, I, re I really want to know what y'all um, what y'all have to say. So let me know in the chat who y'all think are, are going to win, and we're going we're gonna to go into, we're gonna go into um, what we can expect from the various players. All right, so for South Carolina, we, are, we know the squad. Um, uh, South Carolina is a deep... Deep, deep squad. Uh, they are 37 and 0 the season. They are trying to become 38 and 0 on the season. Um, they this is a team that has barely lost. They don't they don't really lose ever. Over the last uh, over the last several years, they're they've barely they barely lost. They are 109 and three in the last three seasons. Um, South Carolina has had 109 wins and three losses in three seasons, three seasons. So that's something to know. That is something to absolutely know. 39 and three. And when we talk about, um, when we talk about this South Carolina team, the reason why they consistently are good is because they win by committee. This is not a team that just runs through one player. They're not. Could they? Yeah. Are some of the players talented enough to uh, to be able uh, um, to be to have a team formatted around them? Yes. But that's not the way Don Staley plays. That's not the way. That's not the way she coaches. Um, so again, I, I can't, I'm not gonna do a like a, a a full 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 overview that I did in the in the final four. So if y'all are looking for like like truly truly um a, a recap of of the full person, um, I'm not gonna do all of that. Um, but I'm gonna do like a skimming parts of it. All right. So so when we when we look at South Carolina, it starts it starts with Raven Johnson. Raven Johnson is the starting point guard for the the squad. She is the player who gets everything going for the squad, and she looks very good doing it. She 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 just very very successful player. Um, and the thing about, the thing about Raven Johnson that we have to sort of keep in mind is that she is on a mission in this game. So last year she was embarrassed, um, in that Iowa game where Iowa severely sagged off of her and allow and, 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 um, and Caitlin Clark did that classic wave off. Raven Johnson said she was embarrassed, said, um, I believe she said that that you know um, it. She sort of questioned her her future in women's basketball. Uh, but what did she do? Did she just sit around and mope? No, she didn't. This girl got in the gym and she worked. She got in the gym and she worked on the thing that she was embarrassed about. She worked on the three point shooting. And guys, she has improved so much for her three point shooting year over year. And it's it's just phenomenal to see. Last year, Raven was 24% from the three. This year, she's 36%. And so when we talk about this game for Raven Johnson, absolutely. Is she going to be dishing out passes? Yes. You know, she's she going to be using her crock pot, cooking, cook, cooking up something pretty good, getting her teammates involved, passing the ball. Um, yes, she's going to do all that. But also, we should expect... Raven Johnson to be looking to shoot threes. Um, this is kind of her redemption moment of sorts uh, to, to just sort of like get that off of her back, you know? And so I absolutely expect Raven Johnson to at least have three threes tomorrow. I, I absolutely expect that. Um, I, I, I think it's going to be very, very, very fun um, to watch. Very, very fun. Um, we also have Miss Tahina Pow Pow. Miss Tahina Pow Pow is great. She's returning um, back to uh, back to South Carolina uh, next season. And she's just a fun player to watch. She is a fun, fun, fun player to watch. She can hit some threes. 
the thing about Tahina is that sometimes I feel like she just sort of like, um, she sort of disappears at times um, in terms of just like being a like huge scoring threat. Um, she's talented, absolutely. Uh, fun to watch. However, there's some games where I'm like, man, you could have had way more points. So for example, yesterday. Uh, yesterday in the Final Four against NC State, Tahina had 10 points. Um, you know, she shot efficiently. You know, she was uh, 57% from the field. You know, she did her thing. Um, but you know that Tahina could have way, way, way more points if that was actually... Um, if, if that was actually, um, uh, if that was actually, her, actually her, her, the game that John Staley wanted to play. Um, so, so yes, absolutely. Raven will be on a mission. She'll be highly motivated to make some, to, to make some stuff happen in terms of three point shots, but also don't forget about pow pow because pow pow can score a lot. <laughs> absolutely can score a lot. Um, also, uh, shout out to YouTube. Thank you so much for the super chat. YouTube says go Hawks. So I assume YouTube is a uh, is a um, um, Iowa Hawkeye fan. I assume that's just my assumption. That's my assumption. Thank you so much for the super chat, YouTube. All right. So continuing on with South Carolina, you of course, you of course, um, have Miss Bree Hall. Bree Hall is uh, also a player who has dramatically improved on the three-point shooting from last year to this year. Um, and it's just a threat, you know? She's a player that you don't want to help off of too, too much because she's probably going to get you. She's probably going to get you. So, you know, something to, something to think about. Something to think about. All right. Also, we have the lady in the middle, Camila Cardoso, the WNBA-bound Camila Cardoso. Uh, the, the, the lady in the middle who just, she just watched her shot. She's six foot, she's six foot seven guys. She's six foot seven. Um, and, and we're going to talk about Iowa in just a second. There's a huge height difference between, <laughs> there's a huge height difference between, um, uh, South Carolina and Iowa. Um, when we look at this South Carolina team, Camila Cardoso eight in that NC state game. I, I talked about it a little bit earlier, but not only was she scoring, you know, 20 plus points, great, but also the efficiency that she was that she that she was shooting at was a sight to behold. So Camila Cardoso, it's it's pretty difficult to stop her. Um, one, because she's just so tall. Uh, and on defense, she's likely gonna block your shot. You know, she's gonna alter your shot, she's gonna get a lot of rebounds. Um, and She's just going to be a pest to deal with. It's going to be hard, hard, hard to battle up against a player like Camilla. Um, the hope that you really have is to get her in foul trouble, honestly. That's that's the hope that you have. Um, and then Ashlyn Watkins. I do think Ashlyn will be starting. At first, at first I was like, actually, no, I think Camilla's going to – no, not Camilla. I thought um, – initially I thought that um, that Chloe Kiss was going to start in uh in the game uh tomorrow but the but the more the more and more and more i think about it i think ashlyn is going to get the start yes ashlyn has come off the bench the last couple of games uh for the most part she spent the the the, the most part the season coming off the bench um and then she started to start a little bit um and then she started coming off the bench again i think we are going to see um ashlyn watkins especially after that 20 rebound game I think we're going to, we're going to see her get the start. And the thing about, the thing about Swatkins, the thing about Ashlyn Watkins that you have to worry about is, okay, she's six foot three, right? You have a six foot seven player on the, on your team already in Camila Cardoso. And you're, you know, you could probably say, okay, well, six foot three, you know, not as tall, you know, maybe not as good, but. Ash Ashlyn Watkins can jump out the gym, y'all. She can dunk. Uh, she's one of the few players in the WNBA that I mean, not the WNBA. <laughs> she's one of the few players in women's college basketball that can um, actually goaltend. Goaltend is a thing that doesn't really exist in the women's game, but she is one of the rare players in the game that actually can goaltend. Um, and she's gonna get. She's gonna. She's gonna do her. 
She's going to get a lot of rebounds. She's going to get a lot of tipped, uh, tipped, uh, tip, tip basketballs. Um, whether or not they're like completely listed as steals, uh, in her camp or if they're considered blocks, but like she gets her hands just everywhere on defense and she's just, it's hard to guard her. It, it really is going to be very, very difficult to guard a player like, um, Ashlyn because not only is she fast, she is athletic as all get out. So it's going to be a very, very tough, 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 tough out to have. Um, again, I, the starters that I anticipate us seeing is Raven, Pow Pow, Bree, um, Camilla, and Watkins. Those are those are the players that I anticipate actually starting uh, for this game. Um, Chloe Kiss is going to come off the bench. We're also going to see Tanaya Fagan get a lot of minutes in, in this game as well. Um, of course, Malaysia Fulwile is going to get a lot of minutes um, as well. Um, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun a fun time, and also yeah, of course Tessa Johnson's gonna get in the game and do her thing as well. So it's gonna be a, a very good game for um, for South Carolina. The things that they have to worry about is um, to me the keys to, to to South Carolina is to play at their own pace and not to play at Iowa's pace. Iowa is one of the fastest teams in the country. I Iowa runs even on even on a uh, made made baskets. They will run and um and 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 get down the court faster than you, and that is something that South Carolina has to worry about, um, not getting extremely extremely sped up, and playing your game, and not totally worrying about Iowa, um, and also we're gonna have to see we're gonna have to see um, I'm actually not totally sure who they're gonna put on on Caitlin. I'm not sure if it's gonna be um if it if it's gonna be Raven or Bree Hall. Uh because Bree Hall has the height. So I kind of wanna put Bree Hall on Caitlin. Um and, and and the idea would be to tell her, hey, ride this girl's left hand side. If if she wants to drive, let her drive. Let her drive. If she wants to drive to the basket on using her right hand, great. Let her do it. But but right that left hand side, be like Nika Mule, be a pest on Caitlin Clark. And um, you know, you, she's not gonna have the greatest of games. Cause if you ride that left hand side and you're right there and she does that step back, it's gonna be difficult. So to me, those those really are the key keys to the game. Play your game, ride the left hand side of Caitlin Clark. That's 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 sort of the keys. Uh, in, in my opinion, that, those are sort of keys to, to, to victory right there. Y'all, Carmella's in the chat, y'all. What up, Carmella? What up, what up, what up, what up, what up? Y'all, shout out Carmella um, for the ticket for uh, the Final Four game yesterday. It was phenomenal. So shout out to you. Uh, Carmella says UConn is going to be a problem next year. Everybody better get ready. I agree with that. Facts, 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 facts. Yes. Um... Loki said uh, they tried that versus UConn, and I think the announcer said they only got uh, four points all night. UConn played that well. Um, uh, um, uh, yeah, Zoro says Bree Hall makes more sense. Yeah, because Bree Hall's six foot tall, so uh, Bree Hall's definitely taller than Raven Johnson. So I think I, I think it does make more sense to do that. Um, so, but but yeah, really just rat that girl left hand side. <laughs> Ride it, y'all. Um, Earl, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, Earl says, I appreciate your growth and knowledge in this media space. Loving your content. Appreciate appreciate you. I, I really do appreciate you. Um, all right, guys. We talked about South Carolina. Now let's get into them Iowa Hawkeyes, y'all. Let's get into them Iowa Hawkeyes. All right. So let's talk about Iowa. So Iowa is a team that is not expected, in my opinion, to actually win this game, but they're a team that absolutely can get South Carolina, in my opinion. All right, so we're going we're gonna to talk through Iowa's players and uh, talk about why I think they have a legitimate chance and what they should do uh, to actually get the dub in this game. All right, so we start with, of course, uh, the – the, the defensive juggernauts of um, Gabby Marshall. Gabby Marshall, 
great player. Absolutely great player. Uh, she's fun to watch. Um, she, I think she's probably going to get put on, um, initially she's probably going to get, get put on Raven Johnson. Um, and eventually she might very well get moved on to Pow Pow, depending on how Pow Pow hits shots. Um, but Gabby Marshall, she's a streaky player. She's a player that can go very, very cold from three. She's a she's one of those three point specialists that can hit a lot of threes in a short period of time, or she can miss a whole bunch of threes in a short period of time. Um, so the thing about Iowa is they need Gabby Marshall to play her game. So normally she's averaging six points a game. However, they're going to need 12, 15 points from Gabby Marshall because likely South Carolina is going to take away Caitlin's ability to shoot that step back. So she's going to go into her second bag, which is driving and then kicking it out to a passer. There's going to be opportunities where Likely, South Carolina will be doing some help defense on on um uh uh, uh for for Caitlin, and there'll be times where Caitlin is going to get uh, uh two people, even three people, with their eyes glued into her. When Caitlin dishes that out, you need you absolutely need Gabby Marshall to catch that ball, hit the three point shot. That's what Iowa needs. Um, that really is a huge key to the game, in my in my opinion. It really is Hannah. Or, or I'm sorry, Gabby, who who really really does need to be um, a, a three point marksman, which she can be at times. She can be. Um, update: Michaela says Gabby says she will play Pow Pow. Okay, all right, cool. Um, so yeah, Gabby's gonna start us start off with uh, Pow Pow. We'll see. We'll see. I I think Lisa might make changes depending on who's doing what. So that's the thing. Also, of course, we have uh, the lady that all this fanfare is all about. Miss Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark is uh is gonna have a field day tomorrow. I I think Caitlin Clark is probably gonna go towards like thirty five, maybe forty points in this game. Um, it's just hard to stop a player like her. Yes, she had a bad game, bad 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 game against um, UConn. However, you don't really see back to back bad games from from Caitlin Clark. You don't really see it. You know. She did great against LSU, downer against UConn, though she still had like 20 points. Um, I think we're gonna see we're gonna see buckets, Caitlin Clark. We're gonna see it. Um, she is going to drive to that basket. She's gonna turn that corner and she is going to get fouled a lot. I think I think her goals really are to get Camilla Cardoso and to get Ashlyn Swatkins, um, it's it's to get those players fouled out of the game. And Caitlin can do that because she's gonna draw those, she's gonna draw those fouls. All she has to do, draft to the basket, turn that corner, and they're gonna foul her. And she's she gonna see if she can get a couple of and ones. And once she continues to do that, it's gonna open up, it's gonna force um South Carolina to change their defense. And it's going to open up that three point step back shot. I don't. I think initially she's not going to have that shot, but once she starts driving, getting fouls and whatnot, then they're going to have to adjust. And then she's going to she's going to light it up. She's going to light it up. I I, tr- I truly anticipate that that she's going to have a phenomenal game. She's probably going to have close to forty points. Likely at least ten um uh, uh ten assists in this game. Um, so yeah, to me, I, I, I think, I think she's going to have a phenomenal game. I th- I think she's going to have a phenomenal game. But the thing about, the thing about South Carolina that you have to worry about is, is absolutely, um, you're going to, uh, you're going to see her, her score a lot of points likely because this is her last game in college ever. So she's going to lay it all out on the line and I anticipate her doing a fantastic job. But also, the thing to note is, sure, even if she gets Camilla in foul trouble, even if she gets Ashlyn in foul trouble, who comes off the bench? Samaya Fagan, Chloe Kitts. So, so they 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 have a lot of 
bodies for South Carolina that can that can um that can rack up in the fouls if if they really want to. Um so yeah, I I anticipate Caitlin going off close to 40 points, at least 10, 10 assists. Um and yeah, it's, it's going to be uh it's going to be great. I I know I know that South Carolina is the best defense in the country. Absolutely. Absolutely. Best defense in the country. However, uh, tra- yeah, tra- Travis says uh, against the against the number one defense. Yes, I do. I, I do think so. I think I think she's gonna score a lot of points against the number one defense. Yes, yes, because no one can really stop Caitlin Clark. Yes, Nika Mule did give the the blueprint yesterday. Absolutely, but also I guarantee you, Caitlin has been thinking about that game ever since and has and is working up in her mind a way to still go off when South Carolina decides to do the same thing. Kate Ka- Caitlin is not gonna just be like, oh yeah, uh she guarded me like that and I and I and I didn't play well. She's not gonna just gonna sit on that. I I, I anticipate her her probably talking to coaches today, being like, hey Let's let's work this out because I know South Carolina is gonna use use how she played me against me tomorrow. So so how how are we gonna do this to to put 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 together a scheme that's gonna still allow me to do my thing? So so yeah, I I, uh, I do anticipate her getting that on the number one defense. Absolutely, absolutely. So so yeah, yeah. I'm I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Um. Robert says Iowa plays zero defense. They don't. They they wait no. They do play no. They I don't I don't agree with that statement. I'm trying to <laughs> I don't agree with that statement. They do play defense. Their 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 defender is Gabby Marshall. Gabby Marshall plays defense. Uh so so yeah. Uh Caitlin doesn't necessarily play defense. Sometimes if she if she wants to, it feels like sometimes she plays defense. But for the most part, yes, they're not a defensive team. Gabby Marshall is. Absolutely. Uh, Hannah Stokey every now and then, every now and then, you know, Kate Martin every now and then. Um, but yeah. All right. Uh, let's continue on. Talking about Chicago's very own Sydney Falter. Y'all, Sydney Falter, she's been she's been really, really good for the squad uh this season. Um she has been doing her thing. For uh for Iowa ever since Molly Davis came uh, uh got injured, um it is my understanding that Molly Davis will not be back. All right, uh, it is my understanding that she will not be back and she will not play in this game and her uh yeah so. Um, uh, Cynthia Falter has 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 been doing her thing. Um, the last game she was she was perfectly at her at her normal average. She averages around eight points a game. She had eight points yesterday. She averages around six points a game. She had seven rebounds um, uh, yesterday. You know, she averages two assists. She got two assists yesterday. So, like, she was right in her normal pocket. Um, they're going to need a little bit more from her tomorrow um, because, yeah, her, her being in her normal pocket is not going to do it against South Carolina. So they're going to need more from her. Um, they're, they're going to need more three-point shooting from her. Uh, she's a player who can shoot threes. She's forty one percent from the three point line. She she can shoot threes absolutely. Uh, so it's about her um, being ready on the wing for Caitlin to kick it out to her, and uh, and she's gonna she's gonna do a thing. So uh, Sydney Falter is she's great. I am a, I'm a big fan of hers, um, and and she's going to have to have a mas- masterful game. She's she's going to have to go off. Uh, because I Iowa needs that. Iowa needs that from her. Now, uh, continuing on, we have the glue, Kate Martin. Kate Martin has uh has really been the the player who has I I, I believe in the past I called her I called her the bailout girl because she really is. She just if you don't know what to do, give the ball to Kate Martin. Kate Martin's gonna figure it out. Um you know, if the ball is not in Caitlin Clark's hand, hands, you want it in, um, you you want it in Kate Martin's hands. I will say one thing is that she um had a pretty bad bout of turnovers in the game against UConn, and I think that's something that she has to clean up. 
Like you can't. She had a, she had a, she had quite a quite a few um, turnovers in that UConn game, and also she missed a lot of bunny shots that she normally would make uh, yesterday. So it's important for her going into the South Carolina game. Efficiency is key. Efficiency is key. Um, you you can't miss makeable shots for yourself. Um, you have to you have to have to be able to hit your buckets. Um, and, and I think that's something she can do. I, like she again, she had a to me she had an off off night yesterday. Didn't necessarily play to her truth her 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 uh, her um her her strengths. Kate Martin is a girl who just does her thing. Absolutely does her thing. Um, she is a player who plays overall. She plays way better than her um, her her uh, talent level or or her natural talent level. I feel like she plays way better than she should. That's what I'm trying to say. She's playing. She plays way 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 better than she should. Yes, didn't have the best of games against UConn, but still did her thing. Um, I think she's going to have a beast of a game a beast of a game against South Carolina because she has to, she has to, they need her to do that. Um, they, they absolutely need her to do that. And then, um, we finish up with, uh, with the lady in the middle. Cedar Rapids, very own Hannah Stokey. Y'all Hannah Stokey. Mm, she was phenomenal yesterday. Phenomenal yesterday. Um, she, she is the reason why, um, Iowa is even in the championship game. Yes, Gabby Marshall did her thing in terms of defense, but y'all, it was Hannah Stokey. It was it was Hannah Stokey that won them the game. And when we talk about when we talk about a player like Hannah Stokey, she is a she's a player who she's a player who can score at will when she wants to. When she wants to. She had 23 points in the game yesterday. She was 75% from the field. Um, she can score, but the key for her is staying on the court. Um, what you notice a lot actually is, is the fact that, um, Hannah Stokey, while just about every other starter for, for Iowa plays basically the, the entire game, Caitlin plays basically the entire game. Um, Gabby, same thing. Um, Kate Martin, same thing. Uh, Hannah Stokey doesn't play a ton um, because she, you know, she doesn't, I don't think she has the conditioning really to play the entire game. Um, so, so it, it, it's going to, it's going to be hard for Hannah to be able to keep up with the bigs against uh, the bigs of South Carolina. Yes. I thought she played very well yesterday. Very, 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 very well. Um, and in my opinion, was the player of the game. Uh, but going against a team like South Carolina, where, I mean, Iowa's team is four guards and Hannah. Four guards and Hannah who plays the center, but Hannah's really a power forward. Hannah's not a center. She plays the center. She's not a center. Um, so you have four guards and a power forward in the starting lineup. And I think Hannah is going to struggle a bit in the game tomorrow. And the reason why she's going to struggle is because she's going against the trees. She's going to be going against Camila Cardoso. You know, she's going to be going against, um, uh, a, uh, a, 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 a Ashlyn Watkins. And so I, I think, I think her game is going to have, have to look different than what it did yesterday. I think we're gonna see we're gonna have to see a a uh, body first um, Hannah and then have the ball in, in in your opposite hand and try to and try to um, get the get get it in the, in in the basket where you're you're leading with your body instead of first leading with the shot because if you just lead with the shot she's gonna get her shot blocked basically the entire game if she does her like if she plays the way she played yesterday and whatnot. Uh, Aaliyah Edwards is is not the same as uh as uh Ashlyn and Camilla. And so we're gonna have to see a um 
we're gonna we're gonna have to see Hannah go off in a different way. And we're gonna have to, she's gonna have to be able to get her body on these players and get and draw fouls. She's gonna have to do that because you need you need to get South Carolina's bigs in, in foul trouble. Cause once you do that, then you can play your game because they're afraid of getting fouled out. You know, if you can get them in foul trouble, you are going to uh, be able to play your game. But first, you got to play differently, get into their body, get those calls, make your free throws, and then once they're in foul trouble, then you can play like you played yesterday. So t- to me, that's kind of what Hannah Stokey needs to do in order to, to get the dub in this game. Uh, so that, that's kind of my take on that. Um, but guys, uh, uh, not only do they have these uh, these these starters, you also will have uh, Addison O'Grady, who I believe is actually going to play a lot in this game because she's going to have to. Uh, Sydney Falter is good. Kate Martin is good. But again, again, they're guards. They're guards who play a different position. Sydney Falter is only five foot eleven. Not that tall, you know. You 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 look at Kate Martin. Kate Martin's only six foot tall. Not that tall. You look at Hannah Stokey. Hannah Stokey's only six foot two. Not that tall. Addison O'Grady is six foot three. Again, not that tall, but taller. So she she's she's gonna get yes. Uh, O'Grady got got a good amount of minutes against UConn. I think she's going to get more uh, more minutes in this game. I also think we may see Sharon Goodman come back on the court uh, because again, you need height. You need height. Uh, that is that is that's what you need because you're going against the trees of South Carolina, and it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to go against them. So I I, I think I think we're going to see some of the players who, um, like, we're going to have to see players step up. We're going to have to see them step up because you, you, I don't anticipate Iowa winning this game with four guards and Hannah Stokey. Because you're, 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 you're going to, you're going to, you're going to struggle because they're going to eat. South Carolina is going to eat on offense. They're just going to get it to the post, and that's, that's going to be it. Um, unless you get these players in foul trouble. And if you do, then that opens up a lot. So, to me, I do see a pathway for Iowa to win this game. Absolutely. Caitlin has to go off in this game, close to 40 points in this game, at least 10, re- at least 10 assists. Uh, Hannah has to get a body on a body and get fouls drawn against both Camilla and Ashlyn. Um, we're, we're going to have to see um, Sharon Goodman get in the game and, and be able to, again, put a body on a body. Uh, we're, 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 also, we're also going to have to see Addison O'Grady come in the game drawing, drawing fouls as well. And finally, we're going to have to see Gabby Marshall hit those threes that we all know she can hit. We all know she can hit them. This is her last game as an Iowa Hawkeye. Probably her last, her last official game of women's basketball, period. So Gabby Marshall, I think, is going to go out with a bang, and she's going to do her thing. She's going to hit those threes that she's been struggling to hit for a good amount of the season. And it's going to be fun to watch. So there is a pathway for Iowa to win, in my opinion. Is it likely that Iowa's going to win? In my opinion, no. I I have South Carolina winning this game. I have South Carolina winning uh, because they're just a little bit too much for Iowa to handle. And it's not to me. It's not the guards. It's not a guard thing. It it is a strictly post thing. It's a strictly post thing. That I th- that's why I have South Carolina winning is because it's just it's gonna be hard. Is going to be hard for um, for Iowa to battle with four guards and Hannah Stokey. Offensively, it's great for them. It the defense is is the thing that I am thinking about. But yes, as uh, 
as Brown Sweet One says, anybody can get got. Anybody. Anybody can get got. Um, and that's what this is all about, man. That, 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 that's, that's what, that's what, that's what the game is all about. South Carolina could absolutely lose because guys, remember where we were, remember where we were last year. Everybody said South, South Carolina was going to win the championship. Then they got got in the final four. They're, they're trying to get redemption this year. Um, whatnot. That's, that's great. They can still get got. So we're gonna see. We're gonna see if 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 uh if, if South Carolina can uh can complete the perfect season. We're gonna see. We are going to see what happens. Uh, but yeah, yes, uh anybody can get got. We will see what happens. Um Yes, Nicholas. Yes, yes. That that's the way Iowa wins. Yes, yes. Hit threes and get to the free throw line. Yes, that's how they win. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, but ultimately, guys, ultimately, here's what I want. I want us to see a very, very close fault game that is determined in the last two minutes. That's what I want. I don't care who wins. South Carolina can win, whatever. Iowa can win, whatever. I want to see a close game. Like I, I want to see it. I, I want to see where we got four minutes left to go in the game, and I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen. I, I don't I don't know. Is is is, is South Carolina going to win? Are they going to lose? Like what's going to happen? Sure, absolutely. It would be great if South Carolina got got because I like people getting got. I do. I do. That's my thing. You know, I I, I want I want underdogs to win in for the most part all cases but but ultimately i want a close game i want a close game where it is determined in the last couple of minutes and not determined by the referees that is something to note the x factor in this game is the referees i do not want this game determined by, by the referees i don't i want this game determined by the players on the court those 10 players on the court i want them to decide the game in the last two minutes I don't want it to be about the refs. I don't want it to be about a, a, a call that shouldn't have been called or a call that technically was the right call but but was a bad bad timing to call that. You know, That's what I want. I want the referees to go away and let these players play. Let these players play. That's what I want. That, that, is, that is what I want in this game. Um... JB says, and no referee interference. Let the players decide the game, please. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. Yes. <laughs> uh, Journey says, refs stay home. I don't think they can. <laughs> I don't think they can. <laughs> I don't think they can stay home. <laughs> oh, man. Ah, <laughs> uh, Kojo, you funny. <laughs> oh, man. Absolutely, Linda. Yes. Yes. That's what I want. That's what I want. Yes. I want to see two great teams playing at their best. That's what I want. And I want players that we don't expect to show up to show up and show out. I, I, I want the game. I want, you know, someone other than Caitlin Clark to be the X factor for Iowa. I want someone other than, um, you know, uh, uh, Camilla scoring the most points for for South Carolina next, uh, tomorrow. That's what I want. I, I want I want a great game with uh, two teams playing their best. I want a close game, and I also want to see some unpredictableness. I want to see players that aren't expected to step up to step up and show out for their team. And ultimately, I just want I just want people to watch this game and to enjoy it for what it is. We're going to see some phenomenal game. Uh, uh, we're going to see a phenomenal game tomorrow. We're going to see two of the best teams in the country battling it out. This is what it all came down to. We started off with 68, had those first four games, went down to 64, dwindled down. 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 
Now we're at two. Now we're about to get to one. And so it is about just us loving, loving, loving this game and just having a blast, having an absolute blast while we're at it. So I am excited about it. Andre says you want a lot. I do. I do. I do. I do. <laughs> I absolutely, I absolutely do. I do. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I, I do want a lot. I do. But guys, I just, yeah, I just, I just want to, I just want to sit back on my couch and, and watch a phenomenal game of women's basketball. I want to go crazy after every, every score. I don't care who scores. Like I want, I want to see big plays. I do. And guys, if, I don't know if y'all, if y'all listened to the stream yesterday on the third and fourth quarter for the Iowa, uh, UConn game, I, I, I was up for whoever scored. I was up. Whether it was Iowa scoring, where whether it was um, UConn scoring, I, I didn't care. I just I just want to see great great basketball, and it was great basketball. It was. That's the basketball I want to see. That UConn versus Iowa game in that second half. That's the game I want. That, that was fire. That you talking about intense games? Yeah, that's great. Uh, Coach just says Quito wants all the smokes. Uh, facts, facts, facts. All the smoke. Facts. All right, guys, this has been really, really awesome. Guys, I am exhausted. Um, I left uh, Cleveland um, after the awesome people of, of the internet uh, meet up. Um, I left at like, I don't know, 2.30, I think, Eastern time. Got back here. Um, and um, once I got here, put my stuff down. Started up my laptop and was live about 15 minutes later. <laughs> so, guys, I am exhausted. Um, we have had a great time talking about women's basketball. But, guys, before I leave, before I leave, I do want to, I do have an awesome thing to share with you all. Check this out. This is, um, this is, a um, official, uh, an official Coke can. The official Coke can for, uh, for the Final Four. <laughs> Isn't this kind of cool? I like well, as I was leaving the game for the final four. Um, they were like, "You might want free coke, free coke." And it, the first person who asked me, I was like, "No, I don't want it." So I didn't know what it was. Like, you know, I don't want to. You know, I don't want to uh, just be grabbing stuff from random people on uh, on, on the street. Uh, but then I saw a lot of other people. They had like these uh, coke um, uh, bins or whatever. And I was like, "Oh, this is actually a legit thing." So I took a whole bunch of them. So so I'm gonna have um, I'm gonna have one. That I'm uh, one that I'm not gonna drink. I'm just gonna keep as like a keepsake. Cause I, I mean, you know, got the final four thing on it. I, I don't know. I, I, you know, I am I'm one of those people who get excited about dumb stuff like this. <laughs> I don't even drink Coke Zero, um, but you know, who cares? I got a Coke can. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> Carmelo says the cartel wants it close to. <laughs> See now, now y'all, if if y'all was a uh, if y'all was with us for our our awesome person of awesome people of the internet um, in person meetup today, y'all would know. Y'all would know what the cartel is about. We had a we had a long conversation about the cartel. We had a we had a long conversation about the cartel. It was it was very fun. It was very very fun. So um, hopefully in the future y'all can join um, for a um, for a, uh, a a future um, meetup. Probably we'll have a meetup in um, in June probably for the Chicago sky. Um, so, so yeah, we'll, we'll have a meetup, uh, either before or after uh, a sky game. Um, and then of course we'll have meetup an all-star game. I gotta, I gotta get my situation situated uh, so I can go to Phoenix, uh, for the all-star game. Uh, cause I, I really want to go. I really want to go. Um, guys, uh, JB said, uh, Quitta, you were up regardless of what of which team scored last night. Your pitch and cheer for Paige was the exact same for Hannah Stokey. I mean, yeah, like that, that's what you know. Cause cause ultimately, I I just don't care. Like I just I just love the game, man. Like and to me, it was so fun. And like Carmela too. Carmela didn't even care who won. Like she she just just wanted to watch a great great game. And that's what that's what it's all about. It's about you know, absolutely. I think it's great for like fan like fans of Iowa to cheer on Iowa and whatnot. But like, I also think it's great for us as like 
fans who may not care to to also be able to be like, did y'all just see that bugger from Nico Mule? You know, and going crazy off of that. And then like Hannah Stokey with the butt. Like, you know, it, it's just, you know, that's what it's all about, man. That is that is what it is all about. Um, that, that's, that's what it's all about. But guys, uh, we did do a poll. And according to the poll, we had 316 people uh, uh, vote. So thank you all so much for voting. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, 74% says South Carolina will win and 26% says Iowa will win. My prediction is that South Carolina will win the game. It'll be very close. And ultimately the game will be decided in the last two minutes, um, with, with South Carolina winning. Um, but, but yeah, it'll be close. That's my hope slash prediction. All right. So, uh, I totally appreciate y'all. I hope y'all have a fantastic night. Um, Kyra says Tampa is closer to me. Well, though the final four is going to be in Tampa next year and I am going to get my, I'm going to get, get my coins together. I'm going to, I'm going to figure out, I'm going to figure out how to, how to get uh, approval for a press pass or something. Um, because I, I want, I want to be there in Tampa next year for, for the, um, uh, for, for the, um, um, the, the final four. Adrian says, did you get yelled at, uh, for cheering for the opposite team? No, I didn't. At least if I did, I didn't notice it. If I did, I didn't notice it. So yeah, it was, it was very fun. It was very fun. Luminaire says, did, do you, uh, did you chat about your bracket challenge? Um, no, uh, only because I'm just waiting until it's over. We'll, we'll, we'll have, we'll have a uh, recap chat about it on Monday, likely. Um, and guys, remember, uh, the winner of, uh, the challenge will be getting, um, official, uh, Queen of Love Sports merch. I wanted to have it all set to go. I wanted to have everything ready, uh, where it was like literally launching, um, as, as the winner was getting theirs. It's not all good to go. So what I'll do is, uh, the winner, um, I will, I will make sure to, to log that. And once, uh, the merch is released, which hopefully is going to be about two weeks, two and a half weeks from now, um, you're getting something. So, so yeah, so you're, you're going to get official, um, Kudala sports merch for, for, uh, participating and winning and being better than everybody else. Cause guys, I lost a long time ago. My bracket is trash. My bracket was horrible. I picked way too many upsets than we actually saw. So, uh, so yeah, shout out to, shout out to the person, whoever wins, shout out to y'all. Y'all, y'all should, you know, y'all got some, uh, some good prediction skills. I should say that, you know? Uh, but yeah, we'll talk about it. On, we'll talk about it on, on Monday. Yeah, we'll talk about it on Monday. Um, Darius says, Quita, how would you feel if Camila Cardoso hit a game winning shot tomorrow? That would be so epic. That would, <laughs> that would be so 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 epic if she hit a winning shot, especially if it was a winning three. Oh my goodness, I would, y'all. I would be like Khadijah Sessions, y'all. I'd be like Khadijah Sessions, the the assistant coach for um for uh South Carolina and I would be running. I would I would run all the way to the locker room. <laughs> even 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 though I'm in Chicago, I, I would be I would be running, running, running. Um all the way to Cleveland. <laughs> like if she if she does that. Oh my goodness. That would be so crazy. That would be so 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 crazy. Oh man. All right guys. Um guys I gotta go to sleep. Gotta go to sleep. Wake up church and then championship Sunday guys I will be live right after the game is over right after the game is over uh tomorrow I will be live I will immediately after it's over I'll be live we're gonna talk about the game and we're gonna talk about if someone got got or if the team that we expected to win actually won either way it's gonna be phenomenal I hope you all can join me tomorrow right after the game the game is at 2 p.m. Central Time, uh, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. I have no idea if you're in a different zip code, different time zone. Um, but this should be great. This should be absolutely great. Um, join me right after the game is over. We're going to talk all about this. And we're about to see, y'all, who is the greatest women's basketball team of 2024. We're going to see. I'm excited, man. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. All right, y'all. Have a good night. I got to go to sleep. I'm tired. Until next time, guys. Bye-bye.